I would expect, A, I would expect level 1 cheese, and B, just it's going to be really hard for Penbells. The amount of manual pushing that CDM is going to be able, able to do is oh, it's staggering. Okay, so on the blue side, we're going to have CDM, and it's going to be Gizmo playing the Vikings. ETO, my ex, is going to be playing Kael'thas, Dragon Temp on the Anubarak, Genre on the Karazim, and Zerg80 going to be playing that Sylvanas. And on the right-hand side, we have Pin Pals. We have Demor playing that Rainer. Iranius playing that Brightwing. We have Bazinga on the Zul. We have uh, Pers... I'm going to say Parzival. Let's, Parzival let's... is playing the Li Ming and Heisenberg on the ETC. And he is wait, the one who knocks. He is the one who... I'm the one who knocks. And, oh, and uh, we have already got this immediate push going down at bottom here. Did Are I gonna go this? with it? Did I call this? I feel like I called this. You definitely called this. So, Vikings soaking three lanes to start. Uh, and they're just going to... Okay, you're going to... Oh, this is not... I don't think this is the right decision to try and counter push this at all. They do have Zul, but the damage that Silva's going to bring to this is absolutely insane. And they're not going to be missing on any soak. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a fort here. Yeah, so that's the problem when you try to match the push um, versus a Vikings team. They're getting all the soak in the other lanes, and you're not. So... Overall, you're always going to lose that trade and fall way behind from it. You need to be zoning the Vikings or at least matching them in the soak somehow. Oh my god, this this lead is absolutely going to snowball. And now, finally, we see the side of Pin Pal splitting. They are going to try and look for a gank here, I think. And Dragon Temp is going to do a good job zoning. Uh, the Entomb is down on this, but our, our Skeletal Bone Prison, rather. But I don't think it's actually made out. Heisenberg's taking a lot of damage. And that is going to be all five members of the red team there, but they still lose the trade in Verum, despite having the numbers. That's bizarre to me. That, I mean, they did have... Whoa, I mean, we did have Eric the Swift, so... It, uh, important. It's important right yeah, there. That's yeah. true. But uh, I'm almost uh, almost a two-level lead. A level and a half lead coming out here for the side of CDM. So they're sitting commandingly in this. I'm, oh, and Zul just gets face yeah, we rolled. saw Zul trying to rotate back up to the mid-trine there. He wanted to get there in time. But a little bit too late as they're waiting in the bush for him. And now Heisenberg, the center of attention there on the ETC, taking a lot of damage. And they're going to continue to push this wall while trading temples. Yeah, and this is absolutely insane. Oh, Heisenberg is going to go down. The beautiful... Oh, and the follow-up. And is it... No. Arrhenius is going to survive, but Demore is caught behind enemy lines, and he's going to fall. This is an absolute bloodbath. Raynor trying to take a really strange route there, walk back into the base through the main gate where the entire team of CDM was waiting for him. And look at Olaf up there on top, just proudly taking that shrine. He knows he can take it. And now he's probably going to make his way down to the middle shrine right after that, while the rest of the blue team just takes that fort in mid. And this is such a traditional Sylvanas Viking strat. You push his four in one lane, you soak in the other two. And they're just ignoring the objective. Heisenberg's going in, but the follow-up, the stun, the lift is there. Heisenberg is getting so low, and the damage, but the return is coming in now. And backing up with the chain bombs are going to be enough. That's one, that's two. Zerg in the back line with the damage, and Demore is he going to fall? He's going to pop the adrenaline, and the lift is not. Ooh, it was light. very close there to connecting on the gravity laps. That would have been four kills. And this is a very convincing three-level lead for Cinco de Mayo. Not looking too hot for Pin Pals. Um, maybe they have a plan to try and get back into this. I feel like they need to just stop trying to match the four-man squad from CDM, and they need to just start spreading out, take a deep breath, start soaking, and get back into the game. Once they hit level 10, they might be able to get back into it. But as I'm saying that, CDM pushing down another fort in the top lane. Yeah, and Zerg needs to be very careful because the gank is here, Zerg. He can actually dodge this. Oh, but the poly is there! And meaning that, no, he was not able. Beautiful polymorph coming out for Rhaenius because you can dodge uh, the bone prison there with that haunting wave, but not able to execute that play. So beautiful drop from Birmingham. That's it's a step they need. Step in the right direction here. Exactly. They lined up their CCs nicely. That was really well done. And it's funny to see this mid-temple actually surviving into the four minutes into the game. Where traditionally wow. four minutes into the game, you're starting to look at the night timing to try and get those done. So they're pushing out during the second cycle of temples. Yeah, that's really interesting to me. And uh, what's more interesting is the fact that Gizmo has been able to pressure this bot lane so hard without being contested at all. Already see ammo gone in this bot lane. He's on the run now, though. Here comes the cow. And he's being oh, able to sneak into that little bush there. And, Good job, uh, Eric. Way to stay alive. Way to stay alive. And the aggressive invade coming in here. This might actually be a little overly aggressive here. If the side of Pin Pal realizes, oh no, but here we go, the engage, the follow-up onto Li Ming. 
Parzival is going to get absolutely wrecked, but somehow is still alive. No, there's the damage from the dagger coming in, and Zerg is chasing this down. Yeah, we saw those two squishies get really punished there by trying to go through the choke, and then another two kills going down there. A very Body nice blocks. silence coming out there to secure the kills, and down goes ETC. That's going to be four dead. Zul, the last man standing. He's trying to clean up. He's doing whatever he can. He's going to rotate top and try to clear this out. But the situation is just looking incredibly dire now. And even if he clears out this night camp, the most important Two thing on Sky Temple is structure advantage. And here comes the dive. Blue team is moving in, getting a lot of damage on Parseval there. Leeming is about to eat that Pyroblast, but it's not going to get there in time. Oof, that was a close one. Yeah, but Bazinga is going to fall. Zul in the melee range. Normally where you want to be, but not in this case. And Heisenberg is kind of not, nowhere to go. And the damage, this just... Oh my god, and the engage. Dragon Trap is going in, and Demore is getting so low. Are they going to take him down? Yes, they are. Dragon Trap's getting very low, but it doesn't even matter. As that is to keep gone at 5 minutes and 36 seconds into the game. And we already have both gates taken in bot. Or actually, uh, bot's still alive, but mid as well. And that's going to be a 5-level lead. And that's something we don't what? see very often in any situation at all. And it's actually really cool to see a five level lead. That's the point in the, that's the point where you say, okay, this is actually extraordinary. Three level leads, yeah, it means one team is dominating, but five level leads is just like the next level. I mean, you never see that. Well, it's Vikings. It's the fact that they're dominating the team fights 4v5 as well as simultaneously split soaking two lanes. I don't think I've ever seen this. I think yeah, maybe this is once. It's actually incredible to see. And now they're yeah. going to be taking the boss as well on the side of Cinco de Mayo. This might be the nail in the coffin. And look, the second Temple Shrine just spawning now with a keep already down. And I think it's safe to say that all the cards are in the favor of CDM here. And let's see if they can contest this boss. Yeah, absolutely. And going in with a great Wailing Arrow to silence out ETC. And then on the point, the Seven-Sided Strikes coming in as well. Dragon Temp is going absolutely ham. And ETC is going to fall. Iranus as well. And Li Meng is getting very low. That's one. That's two. That's three. Four dead. And Damor is running for dear life. He's looking for it. Misses the Q. And Gizmo chasing him down on that Baylog saying, Come here, friend. Come here. Not running for me. Getting chased down by the Baylog, that's always a bad feeling. And they're getting to the point where I feel like the individual Vikings are getting close to being able to duel Raynor now with that five level lead. And that's a scary position to be in. Olaf just staying very far out in front. Now I think it's worth noting that this game so far, he hasn't lost a single Viking. This may be the first here. Bazinga's trying to get that kill onto Gizmo up the top, but the threat is certainly in bottom lane and they need all of their resources there if they're gonna try and defend the core. Yeah, and the boss is pushing this, but it's still very early. Oh no, Demore is getting targeted up, but Kailboss is getting very low. Itomi's running back, and they're going in here. The turn, the beautiful gravity laps connecting out on three. But there we go, the seven side. It's Rick was all Bazinga. They're chasing down uh, the Kailboss, but I'm not sure he's going to be able to actually be able to and trading his genre. Just going absolutely man mode. And Anubarek popping the Locust Swarm right at the end of that fight to make sure nobody could get away. And Vikings still have not had to use play again at all. That's going to be uh, a max EXP push here, as we like to say, when you get yep. all of the buildings. But I think this is going to be the game for This CDM. is a six-level lead. Yes, it is. This is a six. Uh, guys, bear in mind, this is the amateur scene, but I haven't... I'm, no, no disrespect to Pin Palace, because I think CDM played this really well, but I have seven-level lead. That may Maybe be a, a first. record for tournament. Not bad, actually. Not bad. I feel like Malfurion's gonna struggle. But other than that, you know what? If there was if there was a draft pin pals could come out, you got the anti tank, one of the anti tank tanks and stitches, and then you've got lots of AA damage coming in from Rainer Belt. This, I mean, you know, I think Cinco de Mayo is just gonna face roll, but yeah. I think it's gonna be interesting. On the side of Cinco de Mayo, we are gonna have Zerg eighty playing the Kerrigan, and it's gonna be Chen being played by Gizmo, who was the Vikings last game. Each my ex is going to be playing the Sonya and Dragon Temp, or Dragon Temp is going to be playing the Sonya. My apologies there. Each my ex is going to be playing the Sylvanas. Uh, fun if you're fun fact if you're not broadcasting, just open that tab button helps out so much. And also Eat my ex. That's how you pronounce that as opposed to Etomix, which is what I was saying. But on the right hand side we have Pin Pals Heisenberg on the stitches. Uh, Parzival playing the KT Bazinga on the Vala, Iranius uh, on that mouth, and then once again Demar playing that. Oh, I was going to say nice playing the Raider, but the hook up. comes in. I feel fall. like the first hook of the game always dictates the pace of the rest of the game. You know, it's like 
the stitches is making a statement he says no you guys are mine i'm gonna be hooking you all game so get used to it yeah i like it heisenberg making a statement but parzival is in a very rough spot and the combo is coming in with the roots as well but that is a very dead kaldas heisenberg waddle for dear life getting body blocked by his he own team gizmo and Verum, he's inside of the forward. He's not going to be able to get out of there. Yeah, that's going to be a nice kill. Is but is the rest of the team going to get picked off here? It looks like that's going to be Stitches going down. And a little bit of a crazy trade there to start us off. Two for one. And you know what? Uh, I like this Chen. I already like this Chen. He's like, guys, I'm going for it. Team? Team, we're going for it. I that is it. the sign of a Chen that's played a lot of Chen games. When you just make those moves and you just like trust your team. You're just going in. You know you can survive it. A nice gravity lapse going yeah. down on the top. Uh, it's Pin Pal showing a little bit of signs of life, but here comes the Kerrigan going for the Impaling Blades there. It doesn't land it, but it doesn't matter. Kael'thas is going to go down anyways, and now Gizmo taking a lot of damage off of that return hook. Yeah, he's actually getting chunked really hard. He's popping the D, but I don't think it's going to be enough. He's actually going to fall, but Bazinga's in a very rough spot, and the combo coming through. He is going to drop one spell on Arrhenius as being very low, but Heisenberg is tanking it, doing what he does best. So we've consistently seen two-for-one trades coming. Oh, the hook, though, on genre. They keep getting really excited about these hooks, but then... The Kerrigan jumps in right after and combos a bunch of people. They just need to calm down a little bit, you know, make sure that they're not getting turned around on and re-engaged on. Yeah, but the issue is, is that while this is going on, Dragon Temp's like, hey, a free push, bot lane, I'm, I'm here, friends. Does it remind you of a certain character from last game? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, and Parzival, oh, mm, standing in the lane as a Kael'thas in the creep wave, generally, generally not something you want to do uh, <laughs> for reasons just, just demonstrated. His gravity lapses have been on point so far this they game. Have. He's just being a little bit over aggressive with his positioning so far, it seems like. And we see how Rainer is going for the stacking route this game, just kind of like what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Not opting for the more defensive build that you were talking about. And Dragon Temp continuing to push here, even with the Volo in response. And it looks like maybe a little bit of a squabble coming up on top. Yeah, Gizmo is making his presence known. The roots are going to come down. Not going to connect. Heisenberg still has that hook, though, I believe. So, yes, there it is. Going to be going in. Oh, but on the Kerrigan. Maybe not the combo. Oh, and the four, three man combo, and the damage is coming in. Kaldos is getting so low, and yes, he's gonna fall. Gizmo is still leaping Heisenberg as well, and that's a three Ooh, for a nothing. Beautiful combo there to start things off, and then Sylvanas just being able to constantly chunk everybody down, and Chen can just chase indefinitely. Man, what a re-engage! And what was I just talking about? That's what's been punishing them this whole game. They get a hook. It looks good, but then Kerrigan just turns it around with a combo. Remember what I was saying when we were talking about draft too? I was talking about how. Yo, know, these are characters that are really scary to hook into your team. Oh, no. Well, that was a good example of that. And then Rainer gets killed. Through the wall. Nice combo over the wall there. Those are always kind of difficult to hit, but Zerg80 showing he knows his stuff on Kerrigan. Absolutely. Showing that he is uh, definitely quite proficient with this hero. And it's really interesting. We saw it at level one. We saw Sylvanas throw out one Shadow Dagger and took a chunk off the member of every health bar on the enemy team, and it was already quite noticeable. And I'm like, that's yeah. going to be indicative of this entire game. Because you hit the nail on the head. Every time a hook is thrown, they clump for it. Uh-oh, but KT in the mid lane with a beautiful again. gravity lapse. And he's actually going to live this time. Does a good job just backing off immediately. And that was close to being yet another pickoff. A solid two and a half level lead now on the side of Cinco de Mayo. They're doing a really good job controlling the map. And they have enough points for a turn in. And here comes possibly a combo on bottom. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's missed a combo yet this game. And that is a very dead Vala. So almost a three-level lead coming out here for the side of Pin Palace. This bot force is under pressure, and they have Sylv. So they are going ham and a biscuit. But up in this top lane, Chen is also getting engaged on Gizmo. He's in the thick of it, but the route's not going to quite connect, and neither is the grab drops. Gizmo is just being annoying. Yeah, he's trying to get those interrupts. Those are oh so important on this map. But he knows that on the side of... Pin Pals, they don't have enough to turn in, so he doesn't have to risk his life or anything crazy there in terms of interrupts. Just kind of making his presence known and being a little bit annoying. Yeah, 15 to their name at the five minute mark almost. Oh, and the first combo we see gonna miss. Kaiserberg Sigurds connects the body blocks are on. Real Stitches is gonna fall. Oh, and Rainer once again deciding that the way through was through the front gate. And he's that gonna... is that is not the way you want to be rotating in, man. That lesson is hard to learn, but yeah. Now the Gizmo here on Chen just choosing to jump in. He's tanking that fort, no problem. He knows he has drink up. He might actually look to jump back, and I feel like Parzival is gonna step up here to clear. No, it looks like Cinco de Mayo just backing off a little bit. Now they're gonna go ahead and take their turn in. Yeah, I think if Z uh, if Kerrigan had any mana to speak of there, they might have made something happen. But Kerrigan had the back, so I, I like this. They're just gonna get their first turn, and they're gonna have level ten advantage very shortly which means that they're going to be able to snowball this to infinity and beyond this is a very rough spot for pin pals right now 
Indeed, and one note I would just want to make about Cinco de Mayo's comp here is they do very well when they have room to chase with all this melee. So for them getting down these early forts with the first turn in, I feel like it's going to snowball this game out of control. What you're going to see after this first turn in, when they get all these forts, uh, entirely open map on the right side. So all these squishies stepping up to try and turn in or contest that are going to get chased down really hard. Yeah, absolutely. And this is something we often talk about when we talk about Illidan, is open the concept of opening up the map and really allowing this melee assassin to play. But speaking of playing, oh, Kerrigan's going in deep in the barrel, but the Wailing Arrows will be actually getting chunked his chin. Heisenberg's still not going to pull the 7 side strikes coming down. Mazinga is getting very leak. Oh, low, and is going to go down off the back of this. So much damage, and then another follow-up combo there. Is Gizmo going to go down, or are they going to get the kill? They got the kill on Rainer. Gizmo just barely staying alive, keeping that shield up. Wow, the unkillable tank there, soaking all the damage of the keep as they get four kills. Yeah, beautiful combo coming out there from Zerg. Really just securing those kills to end that. And uh, we're looking at a four level lead. So they're they're threatening. They're threatening to beat their we record might, right now. We might see it, yes. This is this is a game of high scores at this point. Yeah, and you know what? It looked like it was going to start a little bit different. We saw trading two kills for one in both instances. And Pin Palace was like, hey, we're here to fight. Just, you know, which is fantastic to see. But now, and not having the level 10 advantage here, this is very rough. Oh, Gizmo, he's looking for the barrel, but not actually finding it and actually getting chunked down, but somehow able to get out. Somehow. What were you talking about at level 7 with Mouth? You want to remind people, because I'm a little little fearful for um, pin pals right now. So, so there's, there's, there's no cleanse. Yeah. I'm not saying this is going to be a problem. But it's gonna oh, no. be a problem because the leap is going in the combo raiders getting absolutely destroyed the seven started strike for good measure but good night sweet prince that is a very dead jimmy rainer so much damage and then another follow-up combo this is gonna be like the 13th combo zergity is hit in a row he's just doing work this game he gets gravity laps but he doesn't even care took a little bit of a chunk uh they're just gonna keep disabling these keeps pushing them there's really not much threat. Even like a hook doesn't have much follow up. But there goes Mouth getting taken out there. Yes, there he's going to go down. Zergady barely staying alive. Rainer finally able to get that kill. And a super bloodbath here. Oh. Jimmy's going to get barreled out. And that's going to be four people dead. The lone KT looks like he's trying to just regen in base so he can defend the core if they decide to push. Yeah, and there was a moment there where th I think it was three members of CDM had more gems on them than the entire side of Pin Pals had turned in. In total in the game wow and that's sort of i think really the story of this is the fact that pin pals has just been shut down so much that they haven't been able to get anything going they have they haven't had a moment to breathe i think this is the first instance they've had of this entire game where they haven't had a kerrigan threatening to rip their faces off even with room to breathe without being level 10 it's hard to make anything happen here and I'm super worried about this now. Another turn in with two keeps down. So immediately two web weavers are going to be pushing right into the core. It's going to be very hard for pin pals to defend this. Yeah, and I was really hoping they were going to be able to get level 10 this game. But it's not looking like CDM wants to make that a thing. But the hook is coming in though, Zerg! They're actually getting chugged pretty hard with the leap on the back line. They're going in on this. Rainer's getting very low in the follow-up as well. Arrhenius, are they going to take him down? And there's Rainer, yes. And there's one, there's two. But Zerg's actually getting chased down in the back line though. He's going back in on this. That poor, poor Malfurion, oh my gosh, Zerg just cannot be taken out this game. And Man, I've got to just GG. say, I'm sorry, Malf, that you have to be put through that. You're getting left on, comboed, silenced, and a Chen in your face. That's a hard life to be a to be a druid these days. It's a hard, lock, hard knock life for Malf right there. It's, <laughs> uh, I was going to try and make that pun here, but I just couldn't do it on the fly. Um, we have three lanes of web weavers pushing in, and that is a maelstrom. That is a combo. That is a wailing arrow. That is a barrel. Good night. It is and going to be. And meanwhile, the core is just going down to the minions here. The web weavers are here. There's no way that Pin Pals could defend this. Good game and well played to Cinco de Mayo. Shout out to Zerg80, really just being a phenomenal Kerrigan all throughout that game, hitting nonstop huge clutch combos onto the side of Pin Pals. He didn't know where the rest of the team was. Now back in mid, a little bit of contestion going on there. Actually able to match him. Droplets got very low there. If they had one more stun, they would have been able to kill him. And now the Swollen is stuck in the roots, but he's able to get 